as anglers are always looking for that secret additive, that secret edge that can put more fish on the bank. But do they actually make any difference whatsoever? Or are you better off just using plain old bait? We brought my mate Sam along. We're gonna put head to head against additives, against plain bait, and we're gonna find out whether it makes any difference whatsoever. I'm a fan of the flavor. Sam's not that bothered. There's only one way to find out. Let's give it a test in a nice little head to head. See which one comes out on top. So it's one of the most frequently asked questions. What additives are you using? What flavors are you using on your bait? Are you using anything at all? And it's one of them that everyone's got their own opinion. Everyone's got their own things that give them confidence, whether it's using nothing at all, whether it's using some flavor, whether it's using some different additives, whether it's using different types of pellets, who knows? And it's quite a divisive subject. Some people swear by it. Some people just can't be bothered. And uh, I fall somewhere in between the two. Uh, sometimes I'm really into it, sometimes I'm not bothered at all. Sam is pretty much similar to me, I think, but definitely prefers not using stuff if he can, if he can help it. So how are we gonna work out whether one's better than the other? Well, we're both sat side by side today here at Boddington Reservoir, and I'm gonna use flavored pellets. Sam's gonna use nothing at all. He's just gonna use pellets straight out of the bag. You have to excuse the road noise. And um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and do it as, as consistently as possible. So we're both gonna chuck exactly the same distance. So we're gonna start off at 50 meters, each of us. We're gonna cast out at exactly the same time. And then we're gonna have the same length of cast. So every time, if hopefully, if you of us, we get a few bites, but hopefully when it, say if I get a bite, Sam will reel in. If Sam gets a bite, I'll reel in. And then we're gonna chuck out exactly the same time and try and keep everything as consistent as possible. That's the only way I think we can sort of come to any sort of conclusion whether flavored baits are gonna outscore um, the non-flavoured today. We might have to chuck a bit further out as the day goes on, who knows? It's a freezing cold day, but we'll, work, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But like I say, the only way we're gonna find out is, um, and do it consistently, is to chuck out at the same time, at the same distance, with the same feeder, and hopefully we'll come up to, with some conclusions. The only thing that I will say is, obviously on a venue as big and exposed as this, the fish can come from either direction. So say if the fish are held up to the left, then they might come to Sam first. And likewise, if they're gonna come from the right, they might get to me first. So if there's one clear and obvious, like one of us gets 10 and the other one gets none, then the only thing that that'll, that'll do is probably say the fish were coming from one direction or the other. So we're gonna to have to take that into consideration, but hopefully we both get a few pulls and there's like one that edges ahead. So that's what we're hoping for anyway. And uh, let's, uh, we'll go catch up with Sam, see what bait he's gonna use. And, uh, and then we'll have a look at my bait and then we'll get chucked in and see if we can catch a few fish. Right, so today I've just got the plain, boring, simple pellets. Now I've caught so many fish on these and in my mind I think, why well, do we need to actually change sometimes? But like Joe, I've had little spells of flavours as well and caught, so I think today's gonna prove a point hopefully into which, which make a difference and does it make a difference? So what I've done with my pellets, just got some Dynamite two mil carp pellets, just prepped them like you do simply, just like put some pellets in a tub, filled it level with water, left it for half an hour, chucked it in the bucket, aired it out, and you get these lovely soft pellets all the way through, nice and spongy, absolutely perfect. And I've got, like I say, I've caught a lot of fish on this, so in my head, I don't see a reason to change. And to speaking to people like Andy Finlay, people like that, they swear by just using the pellets out of the bag, but you also talk to some other people and they swear by flavors. So that's why I've come here today to sort of hopefully prove a point of which is best. Does it make a difference? And all that sort of thing, really. In terms of hook baits as well, I've gone for sort of wafters, so I've got some wafters here, like a, got these ones as like a pinky sort of orange colour. Now I've got absolutely loads of fish on this, as you can tell by the tub, there's not many left. So I've got utmost confidence in this, so that's what I'm gonna start on. And also I've got some brighter baits, some sort of like really high-vis pink colours, some high-vis sort of orange colours, because the water is really coloured today. And this is gonna be an interesting thing, I, I think, because it's so coloured, are the flavours gonna pull the fish in or is the plain pellets enough attraction by itself? So yeah, that's me set up. Let's try and catch some fish and we'll let you know how we get on. Okay, so I've drawn the flavoured pellets. I'm quite happy about that to be honest because I've looked at the lake and it's absolutely chocolate and I think that any bit of extra smell you can give your bait has got to be a good thing in colour like this. So Sam's got plain pellets, I've got flavoured stuff, but what have we put on it? Well, 
I did a video on my own channel where I showed different flavours and stuff that we use, and one of them was bovril, and I've used it loads of times when I've been out with Mick recently, and I've caught loads of fish of it. So what I did, I made a liquid, and I did about a pint of water, warm water, and I put two big spoonfuls of this in, dissolved it in nice warm water, let it sort of cool down, and it made this lovely beefy broth. And I put some liquid liver in. Now, I do a lot of chub fishing on the river, a lot of river fishing, and I use this all the time, liquid liver. It's something that all the carp anglers use, and it is brilliant. It's full of vitamins and minerals. That is a properly good one, that is. That's from British Aqua Feeds, and it's just beautiful. I've used so many bottles of this over the last few years, particularly for my river fishing. There's no reason why it won't work today. And it's one of those, you open the lid and it stinks like a meaty sort of smell, but it is actually really effective in the winter because it's full of vitamins and minerals. And uh, so, really good. All I've done, I've used the old Mick Viles method of pellet prep. Filled one of these Tupperwares to the brim with pellets. And then I put that liquid concoction that I made of the bovril and the liquid liver. And I've just filled the tub with the liquid. And there we go. I've also done some four mills. I quite like a four mil around a feeder, especially when you're targeting big fish. So I've done them as well, just, just as another option. And then for the hook, I'm not going to use wafters or anything. I'm going to use the old faithful pepper army. I absolutely love this. Lovely, smelly, oily hook bait, full of salt. So it's quite simple, really. We've got a lovely, smelly concoction that we've soaked our pellets in. Two mils and four mils. We've got a lovely, stinky hook bait. All we need to do is catch a few fish, hopefully. So, Sam, you ready? Yeah, we're all loaded up, ready to go, aren't we? So both right. hooking 50 metres, isn't we? Yeah. Keep it what there. have you gone for to start with? Hook I've just wise. gone for a little seven mil wash star, like a pinky colour. I've just pinky obviously one. gone for the two mil carp pellet. It's just the standard sort of way a lot of people fish it, I'm confident in. But obviously I know you've gone for the flavour, haven't you? I've gone for the flavour and I've got me good old pepper army on the hook. Trusty pepper army. So you've got a smelly, really smelly bait and mine's really pretty smelly boring. Bait. And uh, should we get it out there? Yeah, let's have a chuck. Go on then. Let's see if we see, see if one of us cracks off. Yeah, this would be funny for the cameras, wouldn't it? All right, you ready? Ready, let's go. Let's go for it. Whoa. That'd go a long way today, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would do, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> we'll wind off our backs. Right, if you set the stopwatch then. Yeah, so that's just got him. So we've agreed, haven't we? 20 minute cast to start with. Yep. And we'll just see how it goes, really. And we've started like at a, about 50 metres, and then we've just got to see if we get a bite, I suppose. Yeah. So like we said, we've, we've agreed on. We'll start off with the same, same, keep everything as fair as we can. And now we've given ourselves, if the fishing is hard, to, to go further. We're not going to obviously chuck 80 metres to start with and leave nowhere for us to go. So we've got a starting point. And then we've got a bit of a, we can sort of play, can't we? Yeah, because I think with the wind as it is today, off our backs like this, the one good thing is it'll go a long way if we need it to. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we've got the ability to chuck it a long way today if needs be, which is, is good. I'm slacking my drag off a bit because I ain't done this for a while, so I'll probably lose the rod. We just had a chat off camera about your experiences with flavours and whatnot. Yeah. What do you reckon then? Obviously, I know in your little bait thing you sort of said, about the plain pellet thing and yeah. catching loads of fish on that. What do you reckon then? I mean, I've got a funny thing with flavours. Like I, I sort of mentioned previous, like I've had it where days where don't I've, I've caught a lot of fish on them. Now, especially like places like Tunnel Bar and I found like by using a sort of a sweet liquid in the depths of winter or with my pellets, it, it does make a difference. Oh, you do think it makes a difference? Though? At times, yeah. But then the trouble is I get days where I, I put flavour on my bait and then if I've not had a very good day and not catching it I'm thinking is that because of flavour my bait and I see so you look at some of these great anglers such as like, like we've mentioned before Andy Finlay sort of Andy Bennett they keep it nice and simple and you get into your mind you think are we trying to overcomplicate it and then yeah. you start to think is the flavour right on the day what if they don't like the flavour do they just want plain pellets so I've got a funny thing with it like I say in the winter I do like it, but it's more, I think it's more of a colour thing. Because obviously I use F1 Sweet, it's dynamite stuff, it's a nice sort of yellow colour, so it just yeah. stands out. And also, I just think that little bit of sweetness in the winter can help for whatever reason there, but I'm not saying it works at absolutely everywhere, it's just that venue. So if I go to somewhere 
for instance, today, I don't, if I use that, I'm not sure if it's right or wrong. Yeah. So by sticking with this, I know carpet pallets, but is there a, an edge I can get? Which is obviously the question mark, and it's a really yeah. interesting debate. It's so really, what do you think to it, Joe? It's really interesting, isn't it? Because I've got like a bit of a few theories on it, and that, and we were just talking about on, on off camera, like places like the Glebe and Lindome and proper match venues. Yeah. Where they only really see match anglers or match style anglers, where everyone's pumping in six mil Coppins pellets or six mil Screttins pellets, and I think the fish is really tuned into plain old boring pellets. Yeah. But I think venues like this, or Barston, there's a number of them where you get that crossover. Like there's there's two anglers to our left today, but carp anglers. There's two anglers over there, carp anglers. So they rarely fish without flavours, do they? They always have something on the bait, oils, liquids, you name it. Yeah. And I think on venues like this, then it can make a big difference because the fish are more used to them. Yeah. Flavours. I mean, that's from from what I've seen in the past, especially. I think this is where it comes down to, like you say, for example, like your Glebe, Lindholm, stuff like that, they're used to the, bla the plain sort of pellets, yeah. how they come out the The fish are almost tuned into them, aren't they? Yeah, so if they're happy eating that and then you throw something on it, it does it hinder it? Does it Does it make a difference? Does it make the, fish, the pellets better? We, yeah. we don't know that, but obviously, when it comes to places like this, especially Barson is obviously a massive example, you see, when you go pleasure fishing there in the week, the amount of carp anglers there, it's just, it's just mainly carp anglers. Yeah. And obviously they're always throwing out all these different flavours, these spod mixes, yep. you know, particle mix and stuff like that. So when we go there, when we chuck, say, your two mil pellets out, don't get me wrong, you catch on them, but that's not really their staple diet. So what we were saying about sort of like your standard pellets being good at like the Glebe, Lindholm, stuff like that, pellets are their staple diets out the bag, out the bag sort of pellets. But you go there, and obviously, at Barston, their staple diet is things like particle mix, spod mix and stuff. So is that because, do flavours work there better because obviously they're more used to seeing different flavours all the time or is it just in the reds? Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's, it's really funny. It's a, a confidence is a big thing in fishing, isn't it? And I think yeah. If it, this is what I always say to people about it. If, if it gives you confidence and you've had some good times with it, then use it. If it yeah. doesn't give you any confidence and you, you're more worried about the flavour than you are you're fishing, then cut it out because you're not focusing on the right thing. Definitely. But if you're confident in what you're using, like I, I genuinely like using a bit of flavouring, like salt and stuff. I like natural stuff. I don't think you can do any harm with that. So yeah. you're always going to do okay with that. And I'm confident in it. So I can fish with a clear mind, you know what I mean? Whereas... Like, like what you said, if it confuses you at all, yeah, then you've got to consider cutting it out, in my opinion, because you're not really concentrating on what is important. Yeah, that's this is another thing as well. It's like obviously you look at the the massive range of liquids and flavors out there. You've got sweet liquids. You've got obviously like meaty sort of fishy liquids, and it's knowing what when to use, use the sweet liquid on the on the right there, when to use this sort of fishy, high oil, meaty sort of flavors on on the right days, and this is. This is the thing where I sort of get lost in with it a bit, like we were talking about. So, obviously, you come here today, Boddington, it's really coloured. So, you think a, some sort of smell will be brilliant, but do I go for. But it might not be. Yeah, it might not be. Because to the fish, your plain pellets might smell really strong. We yeah. don't know, do we? Because obviously, they have got a scent to them. But it's like, even if I was a flavour man, and I looked at it today, do I go for a strong smelling, fishy, or meaty smell, or do I go for like a sweet. Hmm. Like a scopexy, because I think traditionally the, sort of smell. this venue is very, um, I think, sweet dominated. Like yeah, the anglers that do well here use a lot of like mainline cell stuff like that. That's like a coconutty, almondy smell, and yeah, not necessarily fishy flavors. But is that because it's what everyone uses? It's yeah. This is the, this is the this is your thing, and obviously we can't we can't speak to fish or fully <laughs> or that. we can't get into their brain of what they want on a certain day. But this is this is the big thing. Like, is it dependent on water temperature, water clarity? This is the things that we... You could go... You could just keep going on and on about it, couldn't you? So many different factors. So when to use Well, let's what? get settled into these casts. Hopefully, we'll get a few pulls. Hopefully. And we can get a few answers. It's a great venue. I mean, there's every chance we could catch a £20 carp here today, so... 
That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it, on this cold day? So, Sam, no bites on the first go? No, no bites, but we'll keep trying. Keep trying. What we're going to do, have another chuck at that distance and then then work away at it, I reckon. Then maybe you? try a little bit further out. Yeah, get another go because obviously it's early doors, early days yet, anyway. Early days, so. yeah. So I'll we'll just get loaded up and we'll chuck in, chuck in again at the same time. Yeah, you never know, there might be one there waiting now. Do you reckon? Who knows, might have been. Be nice, wouldn't it? Bit of bait going. But it's like one of them days, isn't it? Because obviously you've got that, it's cold wind on it, you just don't know what you fa you're going to be faced with fishing wise or what distance wise. So better to start short and work your way out, isn't it? Yeah. So we left that in for what, half an hour? Half an hour, yeah. No signs yet. No signs yet. I'm using the mould. I like a mould myself, but. Yeah, I'm the same. I think just consistency, consistency with, isn't it? with it, the, yeah. the pressing and everything like that. Are you ready? Ready, let's go. Oh. Go for it. So cast number two, let's hope we have a bit more success. Right. Come on, the carp. Let's hope there's a great big carp at the end of it. <laughs> it's what? Let's hope there's a great big carp waiting there. Nice, wasn't it? We're both using detection today, Sam. Yeah. What combination have you gone for for your long chucking today? Yeah, so um, on the reel, your main line as such, I've just got the five pound, which is the 020. 020, yeah. Which, it, uh, it casts really, really nice. Obviously, it's a low diameter, but it's incredibly strong. It's also really smooth, so when you cast it, I've just got it's to do the stop yeah, so when you cast it, because it's just smooth, you don't really feel it going through the rings or anything, it's, it's really nice. So yeah, I've just got the five pound on the rail, then I've also put a shot leader on, I've got a, a 10 pound shot leader. Like we say, because obviously it's a low stretch line, when you're actually compressing the rod, you don't you don't get the stretch so you can actually compress the rod nicely, you can get them few extra few meters, can't you? I just think it's, um, I've, I've got the same, I've got, um, actually, I haven't. I've got ten pound shot leader and I've got six pound main line. Oh, you've gone, gone for the six? Um, only because I use the six pound for a lot of different fishing. And, yeah. Um, More versatile than the six. I just probably. think it, it casts so well anyway. This stuff. Yeah. That um, I quite like having six as my go-to. But I think for anyone who's used braid. Well, no, like you can definitely get more distance with braid. And I think a lot of the time it's because you are getting more from your rod and. You can, yeah. definitely, you can definitely tell the difference, can't definitely. you? Definitely. I mean, obviously... I don't want to be the marketeer, but it definitely seems like it yeah. feels different, doesn't it? I mean, obviously, when I first started using braid when I was younger, I used to hear all this, everyone was adamant you had to use a shock leader, didn't they? So yes. you'd have, like, your, your 10 or 12 pound shock leader. And obviously, I did that for a while, and eventually, anyway, you could feel it. Your line would go rough, and then you give in, and you crack off, and... Eventually, I started using actually braided shot leaders. So using like a heavier shot leader in my braid. And like you said, the, about stretching things like that, because there's no stretching it, you just seen when you punch the actual feeder, it compressed the rod. And because it weren't stretched, it just allowed you to get out of feeder. There's more power as such, because obviously... I think you do, you, do, you have to put less... Yeah. You, you, like, you're just compressing the rod much smoother, I think. That's it. it. And it's almost it? like, I think the equivalence of like, how to put it is it's almost like casting with elastic on with a stretchy mono isn't it yeah. whereas you've got this obviously low stretch mono now and we're punching them feeders you can fit it's, it's not really like it's not like elastic it's really sort of low stretch yeah. you can compress the rod it just the setup works beautiful when you cast so no bites again so being sam we're gonna get out a bit further as you see we're gonna go up to 60 meters now so i'm just sticking back up ready for another big cast you're on the rich tea biscuit. Yeah, we've uh, we've not caught the day so far, Joe. <laughs> we're, yeah. out to, we're out to 70 meters, so we've had four casts. Have we had now? Yeah, four casts. Four casts. 70 meters. It's a very cold day, and you've got to find where they are this time of year, haven't you? So you could you could take another 10 meters off, and then all of a sudden you start catching. You're just finding where they they gathered up or such, isn't it? Yeah, a bit frustrating because obviously we're trying to come to conclusions, but there's no bites. I've just had a liner. Yeah. A, a couple of minutes ago. But there's a lot of greed work in the lake, so it could easily have been one of them as well. Yeah, yeah. Might be false. Might be a but you never know. false storm, but you never know. It but we're out to 70 metres, so I think we've probably got a couple more moves. 80 metres, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's every chance, isn't there? You, might, you just might hit where the fish are showed up. You don't, on these big waters, you, you never, never know where they're going to be. They could be anywhere 
well, it's been proven the deeper things it could be at your feet or they could be all, all the way out to 100 meters you never know yeah. but we're not seeing any fish have we we're not seeing any roll or anything no but by taking your time and working your way out you're never going to chuck too Pass far them, too early and chuck over the fish and spook them so it's all about case of working your way out isn't it and trying to find where, where they, they are. are or picking them off and following them out yeah no conclusions so far no conclusions so far so we're nil nil we're drawing nil nil at, nil, at the nil. minute and the pound's looking safe for both of us. <laughs> Might but be buying yeah. a pint in the pub instead. Yeah, still time. So Sam, we're starting to think about a bit more, what are we, 80 metres now? Yeah, 80 metres, so... Is that, is that pushing your rod or what? The what? Is that going to push that rod? I think so. If you're a massive bang, we know what's happened. <laughs> Have a crack off or... I, I'm feeling good about 80 metres. I think we're going to get one. Yeah. I don't know if it's got the, got the meat in it, but we'll get it a go. All right, you ready? Ready, let's go for it. We're verging on crack off territory now, aren't we? That didn't go in very nice. Oh, mine did. I think it's time for Big Bertha. So we're at 80 metres. We've got zero conclusions other than a, <laughs> a line there so far. Well, you've technically won because you've had an indication. I've had none ever. Well, I haven't been watching my rod. <laughs> this is a chuck. <clears throat> is that good? One Seven. nil. Here we go. One nil to the flavour. You're, you're confident. One nil to the bovril. Come get in, Sam. You win in, innit you? That's a big fish, that is. Do you reckon? Slow bite, wasn't it? Really weird bite, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll take the clip off. You got your clip on still? Hmm. Yeah. Well, that had been in a fair while, that Sam, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, what was that? Eighty? Was that eighty meters? Eighty meters. Yeah. yeah. So that was your first truck at eighty meters, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that must have been in. At 40 least, minutes? Yeah, that was a long time. Left, I decided to leave it in. And it's paid off, hasn't it? And it's paid off. Now, I did something a little bit different that chuck as well. Whether it makes any difference, who knows? But I've made a real stinky. Yeah, and I can assure you guys it stinks because I've just smelled it. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> like a paste. I just made it out of some fine ground bait and I've put in some fish oil and a bit of that liver and I've actually wedged it into my feeder. And whether that's made any difference whatsoever, but it really stinks, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like a really potent smell and that, that's interesting because... So I've wedged that... that in the frame and then put my pellets on top as normal. And whether that, like I say, whether that's made any difference, but it's got us our first bite of the day, hasn't it? Yeah. And you think you're looking at the colour of the water, it it could well be something it's triggered a bite because obviously the clarity for them fish, it can't be great because it's so coloured. So they they might be feeding on sort of scent really. So it's interesting how first time you chucked it, it's gone, isn't it? So yeah. it'd be interesting to see if it goes again, but it's a good sign. Yeah, I mean I'm gonna obviously I just took my clip off, so I'm gonna have to re-stick up, but I'm gonna go back in at 80. If we've had a bite there at 80 metres, then a good chance we'll get another one. And you're out at, at the same distance, aren't you? Yeah, so, so we're exactly like we say, we've kept everything exactly the same, tried to keep everything as fair as possible. And uh, yeah, yeah you're one nil up. First blood to the flavourings, whether I get it in or not, it's a different matter. But yeah, but it's still a bite, isn't it? So bite, which... one's come to the feeder and it's, uh, it's had a look, isn't it? Feels a good fish though, Sam. Yeah, I think that's a big lad, I do. nice to get one in here yeah funny because the bite was dead weird wasn't it? it sort of went round i said hey we're on and then yeah it sort of stayed there 20 seconds it? later it took until it it went but at least we've got one yeah promising signs and it's took a while for a bite hasn't it but it might be just but we did say we finding them we did say didn't we that maybe this afternoon would be our best chance yeah get out of your way while you net it
Same update as well, weren't everything yeah, was the same, apart from uh, the pace. Pastrami, sorry. The old faithful, my favourite. God, it's wet. you know when you haven't fished with a big big rod for a while? Yeah, it feels a bit strange. It feels so stiff. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit odd, doesn't it? But I guess it's all in relation to what you're catching, isn't it? That's another good thing with that 10 pound detection. Obviously you can see this as well, there's rocks and stuff around the margin. So it just gives you that bit of reinsurance. Yeah. Factor as well, doesn't it? It's ever so abrasion resistant, isn't it? So. Oh, my heart's in my mouth here, so I'm trying yeah. to... Yeah. <laughs> well, it took so long to get a bite. You want to get it in, don't you? I'm going to also use the excuse I'm not on the end peg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there, obviously, there's always that factor as well, the fact yeah, that... Yeah, draw, drawing a bad peg again. The fish can come from different directions. There's a good one, Sam. That's a good one, isn't it? Oh, oh, that's, right. that's massive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hell. Hey, first blood to the flavour. May looks a bit different to the uh, chub done it, Joe. Should we get him up on the, uh, the yeah, mat and have a look mat. at him? So there we go. First blood to the flavouring. And it's an absolutely massive common. I mean, how big do you reckon that is, Sam? He's 15 plus him, isn't he? Definitely 15. I reckon between anything between 15 and 17 pound-ish. Yeah. He's a big old fish. I'd love to weigh him. But um, yeah, first blood to the flavouring. Hopefully Sam gets one, but not too many, hopefully. And. Uh, yeah, first blood to the flavouring. Like I say, we did make that change. We put that paste on. Whether it's made any difference whatsoever, who knows? But we've got a result, and on a hard day like today, I'm absolutely buzzing with that because that's that's a proper fish. Beautiful so, fish. Cracking. Hopefully, we get a couple more. What a result! So first fish of the day. I'm made up with that. Let's get him back. Brilliant. Sam. 1-0. Yeah, you, you're seeing the 1-0 out at the minute, aren't you? <laughs> right, we're going at, what are we going to do? Chuck a little bit further? Yes, yeah, so we're going to go a bit further now. How far are we talking? 90 metres? About 90 metres now, so we're going to good, good length far. We're, we? we're going to the business end of the day, aren't we now? Yeah, it's going to, we're sort of coming to our boundaries now, so aren't we? Are you going to change anything? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have one more chuck, plain... And, yep. boring, and then I'm going to experiment. Are you going to... Right, OK. Because then it, it proves the point that I've been every length and it hasn't worked. Because you don't know, you might not be dropping on any fish, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's only right to have one more go. Yeah, because there's anglers to your left and they've not had anything yet. No, so it's a bit um, of an unfair... Because it doesn't matter what bait you use, if you're not on the fish... No. You can't catch, so we're going to have a, one last resort on it. But the facts remain Sam that this is it. the Bovril is winning. Well, I'm losing I'm losing one <laughs> nil. <laughs> the I'm being so bashed up one nil. So you can come at me with all these excuses about pegs and stuff. Yeah. You see today, today Joe's on an end peg and I'm got angle <laughs> I'm not, inside. I'm not there's an angle up there 200 yeah, yards 10 away. 10 miles away. <laughs> I've got a peg full of swans it's just not going my way but we'll, we'll keep going. May keep feeding him. I'll give him one thing as well. His pellets do smell nice. It's more like <laughs> bovril. Well. Right, let's see if we can uh, get it out there, shall we? Having a go. Are you ready? Ready. Have you still got the uh, bright wafter on? or? I've gone for like a pinkier colour now. Pinkier sort of colour. Pink. So we'll give this a go. Right, ready. Hopefully it flies around. You ready? Yep. Not my best cast. I did I did get to the clip, but it weren't didn't go in that well. Went in a bit like your flask. I thought you chucked your flask then, but <laughs> <laughs> Nah, no, I went didn't go in too bad, did it? It's weird seeing them going in it's side by side at the same distance, isn't it? Yeah, so we're we're out at that sort of 90 metres now. And we're right at the end getting towards the end of the day to be fair, Sam. Yeah. I need to try and so you need to blank out. If you're going to win, you need to pull two out of nowhere. Yeah, I need a bit of Fergie time magic, no, no. Yeah, and I need, I reckon if I get one more, I've sealed the deal really, haven't I? Yeah. Like, you've got the advantage at the minute. Come on. It'd be nice to get a quick one after like 10 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, to be honest with you, I thought you were going to get one straight away after, well, not straight away, but you know what I mean, next chalk. 
Do you think they're coming later? Yeah, I'm more but... surprised I didn't get one then. I'm still sticking with that higher tracked stinky paste in the uh, thing. Really, it really stinks that does. <laughs> yeah, it does smell, but that might, like I say, the water's coloured, it might water's be the today. Sam, I can't believe it. We were just in injury time. Yeah, and he's just, uh, just made it even worse for me. He's beat me two now. now. Can't believe it, can you? And it's literally, you, well, about to pack up, weren't we? It's just gone. Yeah, it's been in. My alarm just gone off for yeah. five minutes. <coughs> That's been in. So probably 36, 37 minutes. And that was 95 metres. So the longest chuck of the day. And we felt like it was good for a bite, didn't we? Like condition. Yeah, I mean, obviously with that, especially the sort of later part of the day, you know, it's just warmed up slightly. Obviously your, your light and stuff changes a bit now. And it, it should be the best time for a bite. And you've got one, haven't you? Yeah, it doesn't feel like, it feels like a, it's a much smaller fish than that. Yeah, it don't look as big, but still, still, still bite, two nil it? to the bobber, isn't it? Still two nil, isn't it? Two nil. Can't believe it. Yeah, it's been a long, long time, wasn't it? And that's that's been apparent on both your bites. It's been long chucks. Long right? chucks. Yeah. Really patient. Which I think is, fishing. you know, this because you're not getting any indication, are you? So you you've got you kind of got to go on the gut instinct a little bit, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, it's not like obviously other fisheries. You've got features to chuck to. You've got probably get indication line bites, stuff like that. Here, it's like you're just chucking into. It's like an ocean almost, isn't it? It's massive. Yeah. And it's just having the patience for the fish to come and find your bait, really. And like I say, both bites have been in a long time, so it's... Oh, well, we were just having a chat to one of the dog walkers, weren't we? <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, Sam, we've got one. And then all of a sudden you tip folded around. Definitely a smaller one, isn't it? Yeah, very welcome, mate. Yeah, it's a good, good fish. Common. The commons like the bob. Yeah, We're all good fishing here. I mean, that's just, that's quite a small one for here, and that's still, still like ten pounds. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's eight, ten, isn't it? But more importantly, Sam, two nil. Two nil. I've been absolutely, uh, been absolutely thrashed today. Two nil. Been a bad defeat. I've blanked, which makes it worse. <laughs> but hopefully, we've got some sort of. Well, that gives us a bit of, bit of evidence, almost, doesn't it? Yeah. So let's get him on the map. We'll have a look at him. Yeah. And then we'll finish this little video. Yeah. So there we go. Last chuck of the day. Deep in injury time. Yeah. Two nil, convincing victory to the flavours, I'd say. Have to be our blanks on the on the boring old pellets, and uh, I've been battered two nil, but I'm Bovril, innit? Well, sometimes it's been feeding a nation for hundred years, hasn't it, Bovril? So yeah. Why wouldn't it? We like carp, it. Why would so. the fish like it? Two lovely carp, not as big as the last one, but still getting lovely on for fish. Yeah. nine, eight and nine pound, bit of a manky tail, but we won't hold that against him. Very welcome today. So draw your own conclusions. I think is the uh, thing, but. Two fish, solid yeah. victory, I'd say, for the for the flavour. Yeah, and like I say, there's been four people fishing today, and you're you've caught two, and no one else has had a bite. So it's obviously something that's worked. You know what it's I mean? It's done not, it. definitely it's not done, done, done any damage. harm. So thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to slip this one back, and then revel in the uh, in the glory. To be honest.